So welcome to the CYC X1 Pro install video. Uh, this is going to be a stock install using the parts that you would get if you ordered a kit from CYC. So for anyone who's never seen one before, the X1 Pro is a 3000 watt motor made by CYC. It's new to the market and it's going to be mounted on this Salsa Via frame, which has been upgraded to have suspension on the front forks and hydraulic brakes front and rear. This is going to be uh, a pretty long video by my standards um, because I want to cover all the aspects of the install um, plus any sort of problems that I might run into and a bit of information um, about how I think it's going. So bear with me and we're going to get started. So if you order a motor kit from CYC, this is what you will get in the box. Well, depending on which options that you pick. So if you go with the 58 volt model or the, uh, the 52 volt model, this is what you get for the motor. You get the motor here and the controller is already attached. Uh, you have your battery connector here. And uh, this here is a speed sensor here. And there's, I believe this one is pedal assist maybe. And then this blue one here takes the main wiring harness. Um, I've gone with the, the twist throttle option. Um, this is the main wiring harness here. And you've got uh, ports here for the, for the brakes and for the display unit. And this is the display unit here. Um, yeah, this is the speed sensor. Uh, you get one of these wheels here, which is the, the free wheel and the uh, the reduction gear um, I'm going with this one which they call a 32 tooth to try to start with you get two crank arms and this is the first one this one screws into this piece here and then this is the non-drive side crank arm they give you a bunch of spaces to help me get it on my 68 mil bottom bracket you can do it on a up to an 80 mil bottom bracket with this kit some zip or zap ties um, we have the brake cutoffs here, magnets to uh, to move away from the brake cutoffs. We have this strap which um, holds this motor up onto the frame, which uh, should be interesting. Um, this is what they have as the pedal assist sensor. So this goes on, I believe, the non-drive side. And then this is the, the bottom bracket and uh, so one side should slide off here, I think it's this side. Yeah, this side slides off and then the crank arms go on here and on here and then this fits um, through, the, uh, through the bottom bracket. So for this build, instead of mounting the, uh, the motor first down there, I'm going to get the controls all squared away and the handlebars and then I'm not going to be tempted to rush them at the end so I can get out and ride the thing. Uh, so I'm going to put the throttle on the right for this one and I'm going to put the display here on the left. Um, the throttle is uh, a little bit bigger um, so I'm going to do what I did before and cut down, cut down this handle grip so it fits the throttle on. Uh, and keeps the same proportion uh, for the bars. So for the display on the left hand side all I've done is I slacken this off uh, make sure it's nice and loose. I'm putting it inside of the brake because um, I'm not going to be using the buttons that often I don't think and having the brakes nice and close for the grip seems to be the, the best option. Um, so everything's loose, I'm just going to get it in the right positions and then I'm going to snug everything up just using uh, Allen keys. Um, the one underneath this is super, super tiny though. So you need a really small Allen key for that. So this is everything on the left hand side of the bike in position. Um, the display is on. Um, I will say that it is a plastic fixing around the edge of the mount and the screw is very small. Um, and you don't need much to torque it into place. 
Um, I didn't even use this full screwdriver, I just used the bit and a holder um, and that got it in nicely. So for on the right hand side of the bike where the throttle is going to be, what I've done is cut down the handle grip so that it will allow me to use the throttle without it being sort of miles out of center. So I'm going to get this on and then I'm going to get everything tidied up in the right position and locked in place and we will see how this side looks. So this is everything secured on to the right. This was the only position I could really put the throttle with this coming down because anywhere else it would uh, impinge with the uh, with the gear shifter. Um, but yeah, it feels pretty nice with the uh, with the twist throttle. Um, still got access to the brakes, and uh, it's still uh, reasonably easy to uh, to shift gears. It's a slight bit across from where it was before, but it should work fine for on the road. So they've also supplied with the kit these. Uh, if we can get it to focus, these brake cutoff leads and they work with a sensor and a magnet and you put the magnet somewhere on the brake so when you move the handle it separates the magnet from the sensor and cuts power to the motor so there's one for this side and there's one for this side and to be honest i always find them to be a bit of a pain in the ass to mount um, so i think with these i'm going to use this piece here um, which is a sort of an adjustment lever and I'm going to use some something to stick the magnet onto this part and then I'm going to mount the magnet uh, sorry the sensor onto this part and then when this part is moved away by the lever it should uh, it should work and this should give me a decent enough surface I think there to get the brake magnet on and then I've just got to figure out a good way of popping that on there it comes with a sticky mount which I don't know, it just looks the wrong shape and size. So I'll see what I can figure out and I might end up using um, a zip or zap tie to get that fixed. So what I've done is to basically super glue the magnet onto the end here. So that's open position. So the motor would be cut out and that's the closed position right next to the sensor. And that would be enable the motor to run. So it's nothing fancy and I'm going to leave it like that for now and see how it works once the motor's all hooked up and then probably figure out some better way of mounting the uh, the sensor on because I'm not sure I like that sticker and I don't think it's going to last very long if it starts raining either. So that's that one on that side on and then I've done exactly the same over on this side and you see it breaks, close and then breaks. There we go. So we're on to the main part of the show, which is to get the motor fitted into the uh, the bottom bracket here of the bicycle. Uh, in my case, this one here is a 68 millimeter bottom bracket, but you can also fit them this type of motor up to an 80 millimeter bottom bracket. And to do that, we give us these, uh, or we use these spacers here. So we have a three mil a 5mm and a 7mm and those will space out the different sizes depending on what bike you have. This is the, uh, the bottom bracket piece itself and that runs straight through there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it together outside of the bike here just so you can see the sequence of how it looks and then we'll get it fitted on. So this is what it's going to look like on the bicycle. This part here will be running through this part here and according to the instructions they say to put the three mil, three mil spacer on the drive side of the unit which is this side and then the other two spacers go on the non-drive side um, which doesn't actually leave you that many threads to lock into this uh, bottom bracket here on that side so I'm assuming that you know they must have tested it so it must have enough to hold it on the non-drive side you need one of these uh, to install it and that links in with these splines down here and we also have a nice uh, 
torque wrench here to put it on because the specifications they're calling for says for 25 to 30 newton meters of torque. So what I will say is this thing is still reasonably heavy coming in just over three kilograms. So it's not the easiest thing to hold in place around here. So what I've done is make a little step to take the weight off so I'm not having to hold three and a half kilos with one hand while trying to line up all these pieces and get them slotted through the bottom bracket. What I've done to try and make this as easy as possible is to get the spacers already lined up in position and then we're going to take the bottom bracket and slide it through and then it has to rotate anti-clockwise into the threads. This is the tool that you need to use to uh, to complete the job. All I'm going to do right now is just snug it into position because you have to rotate the motor up once it's in. And then around the other side, this is the other piece. So this then slides through and locks into the other side of the bottom bracket. So both sides of the bottom bracket are now in place and the motor is swinging loose because you need to bring it up and mount it onto the bike with this mounting strap that they've supplied. And once that's done I'm going to then torque these bottom parts, these brackets, to the right specifications. So what I have noticed is that it is insanely tight trying to get this golden chain part on, like really tight. I've actually gone up to the slightly larger um, gear that we've had and put it straight on the outside without having the, uh, the crank arm because otherwise I couldn't even get it on. Um, but I don't even know if I'm going to be able to thread I can't see how I'm going to thread the crank arm over the top of that. But yeah, just getting it on seems to be ridiculously tight. You know, I'm going to have a quick play around and see if I can get any better luck with this one. So I finally actually get this golden chain on. But I mean, it feels insanely tight. Like, ridiculously tight. Like, it's even rubbing on this part which is supposed to, like, I mean, I can't see how it would need any chain tensioner on here. So I think what I'm going to do is strip it off and put another link on this chain and see if that makes any, uh, any difference. Okay, so we've reached the point where the chain is so tight that it just, just can't do anything with it. All three gearing options that I've got are exactly the same chain tightness. I don't know. I don't know if they changed the design of the motor and sent me a new chain that doesn't fit or fits the new motor length. I've no idea. So I'm left with the option of trying to dismantle this now to get it off the bike um, without damaging it, hopefully. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. But at the moment, this is installation over. So I'm going to sign off at this point and leave it as it is and I'll get this video sent off to CYC and find out what they've got to say really. Um, no idea, no idea why this is not um, going on but it seems to me the chain is too short because I mean it's so tight you don't even need that. Um, it's also made a right mess of this gear in places. Like, I mean, you see there, like trying to get this on by using uh, some torque to move the chain around. And that was the only way we got it on in the end. Um, yeah, not the greatest start, CYC, really. <laughs>